How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Junluka, aka Dr. Calcagno. I am a final year family medicine resident here in Canada who just passed my step three exam, found out last week, super excited about it, meaning that I am officially done with all of my American exams that I wanted to have in case I ever needed them in the future which means that I only have one exam left in my entire medical training. And I feel it. I definitely feel it. It's been more than 10 years of studying and writing these exams and studying for the next one and writing that one too. And I swear, looking back with the MCAT, really the, the first exam to really start this whole process, it seems naive at the time, but I truly believe that that would be the hardest exam that I ever would need to write in my entire medical career. And I was so wrong. And I want to talk about that here today. This is the definitive guide, okay? Definitive, in my opinion. I've created a tier ranking system that goes over every single possible exam that most people end up writing throughout their medical journey and will compare them to each other. The Canadian exams versus the American exams, the different steps, where the MCAT fits in. I'm really excited to do today's video because hopefully it lets people know no matter where you are in your journey, what is still to come and what you've accomplished and where you are and how much better you're gonna get as time goes on. And just before we dive into the tier list, this video is sponsored by a website that I found to be really, really helpful for me around the time of writing step three, and that is predictmystepscore.com. We'll do an example later on, but basically this is a website that helps you to plan when to take the exam, like when you're ready for it, as well as how you're gonna score on the test statistically. It uses different metrics like how you've been doing on your UWorld as well as some practice exams to give you a good idea as to where you will score if you took the exam today. You get a 10% discount by putting in the code in the description below. This is a free version as well. Everyone should go check it out. I found it really, really helpful in helping to ease some of my step three test anxiety coming up to the day. So we'll do a, a practice simulation and prediction right now. I just wrote the step three. I'm gonna put in all my stats on here, just as you see, this is their free version and it asks you for your step one score, your step two score. This does support predicting scores for step one, step two, and step three. And you'll see it supports your world and MBME and anything else that you're doing. You can also track over time how your predicted score continues to go up as you get better and keep studying and answering different practice questions as well. On my actual step three exam, I got a 215, which is within a, a relatively good confidence interval. I did feel like my first day went really, really bad. Um, so I, I'm very happy with the results of my prediction compared to my actual score. Okay, so here's the way that the tier list works. I needed to find a way to compare the different exams to each other side by side. And, and the hard part about this was that you take these exams at different parts in your medical training. So the, here's what's going on the tier list. You have the step exams, step one, two, and three, the MCAT, which is the admission test to get into medical school. Then there's the LMCC test, which is like the Canadian equivalent-ish to the step exams, and we'll get into that. And then finally, there is the residency specific, for me right now in family medicine, it is the CCFP exam, specifically for, for family medicine. Now, the way that I'm gonna compare them is in four different categories. They'll get different ranks depending on where they fit in. The different categories are test format, so basically how hard is the test in terms of number of hours you're there and what is the test like, multiple choice versus short answer. Then there's material, and, and we'll get into that more. And then stakes, what happens if you don't pass this exam or where does the actual, is it pass or fail or do you need to just score highly on it? And then finally is my own personal experience, which I will factor into my overall tier list as well. So we'll go in order as you progress through your medical training. First up, transition from undergrad to med student, you have to take the MCAT or most people will have to take the MCAT. The MCAT is a seven and a half hour exam, which at the time when you write that, you've probably never come across something like that before. And that it's really jarring when the first time you realize that you're gonna have to sit down for this very lengthy exam. You are taking the exam though for only about six hours and 15 minutes. The rest of it is break time. And the way that we'll break it down in different sections, listen, I'll just say that at the time, like I said before, I thought that the MCAT was gonna be one of the hardest exams that I will ever need to come across in all my medical training. And the way that it fits in here, I'll say that with test format, I actually gave it a C rank because you'll see that seven and a half hour exam really doesn't stack up compared to many of the other exams that we'll come across here. Um, material also would have to be a C rank because although at the time there are so many different things that are on this exam, you have to know physics, you have to know chemistry, you'll have to know organic chemistry and biology and psychology and sociology as well. 
you, you also need to keep in mind that people that are taking the MCAT exam don't specifically need to come from a certain program. And technically, there are no real prerequisites. You could teach yourself many of the things that will be on the exam through different courses and practice um, exams online. But this is not an exam that you need to be in a specialized program for. So you can study it, and even if you're not a pre-med specifically, you're coming from a non-science background, you can still do well on the MCAT compared to many of the medical school exams where if you didn't actually go to medical school, you really have no shot in some cases of passing some of these exams. Um, and as a result, that section gets a, a C tier. Now the stakes of the exam gets top points. This is an S tier stakes. Not only do you need to pass the MCAT, but how well you do on this test directly determines if you're going to get into medical school and then also the quality of the medical school that you're going to get into really this will determine whether or not you get to be a doctor and for that reason this gets full marks it, it is s tier stakes for the mcat and finally my own personal experience i took the mcat twice and i've talked about this before the first time i took the mcat i, I didn't fail it didn't do bad i got like a 505 or a 507 i studied for a couple of weeks at the time really just kind of passively um and I didn't get anywhere close to what I needed. And, and nowadays, most people taking the MCAT, you need to get a very high score, 515, 517 or above. And as a result, you get S tier in terms of stakes. Overall, with my calculations, this puts the MCAT in A tier difficulty um, in terms of everything that you're gonna be coming across. All right, next we have step one. And step one is taken usually by most American students at the end of second year, right before they start their clerkship. And it is an eight hour all multiple choice exam. It's about 280 or less multiple choice because of the sections vary on average. Step one is, is definitely a difficult exam, but its difficulty was downgraded when it switched from a numerical score to now being pass or fail. Before it used to be a lot more important in terms of determining what residency you got into. That's not the case anymore. You just need to pass step one. And as a result, I have that the test format overall at an eight hour exam I mean, it's, it's only eight hours, right? So we're, we're gonna give that a, a B overall. Material, step one is notorious for being one of the hardest in terms of it is such a heavy focus on things that you usually don't even end up using when you're a doctor. There's a lot of biochemistry on there, a lot of foundational medical sciences, which many of us won't actually need to use, um, depending on what specialty we get into later on. And I think overall, it, it was one of the most challenging in terms of like, some of the concepts that they ask you on there are so abstract, so remote, and just straight memorization. Like you can't really work a lot of these out in your head and reason with it. And for that reason, the material is, is S tier difficulty. Um, stakes is only B tier because it is only pass or fail. Now, now you, you don't want to have to fail the step one, but there's no scores reported. B tier difficulty at best. And then finally, my personal experience, I wrote step one because I was a Canadian student, um, actually right before my residency interviews towards the end of my program, I was in a three-year medical program. And because I had so much different stuff going on at the same time, I think because the Canadians don't get any dedicated time to study for it, I have it at A tier difficulty. It, it was very difficult to study for and do well on the exam. I did pass on my first try, I did it in about three months, uh, but it was a difficult exam. Overall, I would put step one in the same tier as the MCAT at A tier difficulty overall. All right now, here's where the difficulty starts to ratchet up a little bit. Now we have step two. Step two used to be divided up into step two CK and step two CS. Step two CS is no longer a thing. Any new medical students will probably never come across it ever again. It is a nine hour exam, all multiple choice, and you usually write it um, right before you apply for residency in the United States because you do need to score highly on step two to determine what residency program you're gonna get into. And because step one is now pass fail, a lot of your decision, this determines what specialty you get to be in many cases, especially if you want a really competitive one. So it's, it's a clinical focused exam, but it's a hard exam and there's a lot of high stakes. So the way step two breaks down, I have the test format at nine hours of multiple choice. You get a difficulty in my opinion for test format material. It is clinical, but there's so many different specialties to draw from. They'll test you on pediatrics, psychiatry, surgery, OBGYN, and especially because you're writing this exam before you apply for residency in many cases. 
you know what specialty you want to get into and if you've done a lot of electives in anesthesia for example you probably haven't been studying as much in some of the other areas like psychiatry or pediatrics for this reason i'm going to give the material a difficulty stakes needs to get an s this is the top stakes exam i would say in many cases uh, because it determines your future and what, how you do on step two. Um, if you pass, you never get to write it again. So it is very important for US students that they actually take this seriously. And finally, my own personal experience, um, this one here, if you guys go back and watch some of my other exams, it was very, very challenging for me. I tried to do step one, the Canadian exam, and step two, all within three months, all back to back, and it didn't work out for me. I passed two of the three. Step two was the one that I failed on the first time. I went back and did it again, and I gave myself some time to study, and it was a lot better that second time. Um, but overall, I put step two as an S-tier difficulty. This is either the most difficult or the second most difficult exam that you will ever write in your medical training in many cases. Now, the Canadian version-ish of the step two is the LMCC exam. Um, a lot of times, I hear people talking about this all the time, that the LMCC is equivalent to the step two. Th that's not true at all. The LMCC exam is also known as the MCCQE1 exam, the Medical Council of Canada Qualifying Examination number one. They dropped number two. LMCC exam is what we'll call it from now on. It's a seven and a half hour exam, and in the first half of the day, it's a four hour multiple choice block. In the second half of the day though, it's a three and a half hour like short answer, like case type style of questions. You do get a break in the center. Overall, it sounds like it's seven and a half hours, but myself, many of my friends that were also Canadian graduates, we all finished the exam early, which is, I can't say that about any other exam on this tier list for the most part. I finished the LMCC exam with about an hour left over in the second half, and I found that there were more than enough breaks. So overall, I'm gonna give the LMCC exam a C difficulty for test format. The material is much simpler, but similar to what you would see on step two. I think that if you can pass step two, you can pass the LMCC exam. Some of them are worded a little bit differently than what you would see for the American exams. And I'll say that I definitely had an advantage being a Canadian student. I've heard that many times from uh, some of the international students that wrote it, but the material gets B difficulty. The stakes, this exam here is, is pass fail, uh, especially if you're a Canadian applicant writing this Canadian exam, you don't need to get a high score on it. You're just trying to pass. And this determines whether or not you could actually go through residency, but as the, the fail mark for the LMCC, I think it's above one standard deviation from the mean. Um, so, so you're just trying to get an average score um, in, in many cases. So you get a B difficulty for stakes. And finally, in my personal experience, I wrote this one right in and around the same time that I wrote the step two exam. And I, I just found that studying for step two made me way more than qualified to, to pass this one with relative ease. Um, and for that reason, stakes, I'm gonna give about a C tier um, for overall difficulty, meaning that the LMCC exam, in my opinion, represents the lowest tier of difficulty of all the exams that you'll have to write in your medical training especially if you've gone through a good medical school and you've also taken and done well on all the other exams. Now, to contrast the probably easiest exam that you come across in your medical training, you have what is, in my opinion, the most difficult. This is the step three of the USMLE. The final step exam is a 16 hour exam broken up between multiple choice and cases that are interactive and you actually need to like triage and treat different conditions and concerns for patients when you see them in different environments. This is the most difficult one by far um, in terms of just mental stamina that you need to, to take an exam for 16 hours spread across two different days and to just do multiple choice after multiple choice. Not just that, but the material itself, this is a combination of clinical and non-clinical and statistics and epidemiology. It's everything. It's step one, it's step two. And you end up taking step three when you're already in residency training. So much of this stuff, if you are well removed from medical school training already, uh, especially if you're already in a niche specialty like plastic surgery, you really have no reason for the last two or three years to have been studying about psychiatric medications. Um, it's just difficult all around. I gave test format top tier difficulty, 16 hour exam, two different things. Uh, material S tier difficulty, stakes, I mean, for many people, this is just a pass-fail exam. You're already in residency in, in many cases at this point. So, so maybe I'll give it a C-tier difficulty overall for stakes. Um, finally, personal experience. This one was brutal. I felt this one more so than with any other exam. And I think that had to do with the fact that I was so busy with residency already, coupled with the fact that it was just exhausting top to bottom. 
uh, and you have to take this one in the States. So for me, I had to drive physically across the border into New York to write this exam. The other steps you could actually do here in Canada. Overall, I put this S tier difficulty, definitely the most um, strenuous out of all of them, in my opinion. And finally, you have the CCFP exam. This is the one that all Canadian family medicine residents need to write at the end of residency. Things to say about this, the overall test structure, it's broken down into one day of short answer and one day of going in person and doing some like actor interactions with a webcam. Um, this is an exam that overall is like four hours on the first day and then I believe about an hour and 15 minutes. So overall, test format, I have to give C tier. This is not difficult or physically taxing on the body. All in all, you're only there for about five hours, which is nothing compared to the step exams. Material, sure this represents the most specialized stuff, but at this point I've been working as a family medicine resident for two years and this is stuff that I'm doing every single day. Sure it's very very niche things, I'm not expecting anyone in cardiothoracic surgery to be able to come in and just take the family medicine exam and know all of the different treatment guidelines and when to start which medications. It is specialized stuff, but it's stuff that I do every single day and for that reason material difficulty I'm getting B tier at best. Stakes, it's very important. This is the culmination of finishing your residency training. And in some cases, if you are not successful and you're not successful the second time, you really can't practice. There's different workarounds and things you can do depending on what province you're in. But overall, I'd probably give that A tier difficulty for stakes. In personal experience, guys, I, I just finished the step three and going through, like I finished step three and I do this stuff every day and I'm going through the practice questions right now. I. I can't give this anything above C tier for personal experience. This does not compare to the step three exam in my personal opinion. Overall, I would put CCFP exam, the end of family medicine training in B tier difficulty overall. So then just looking at the, the tier list, I have step three and step two in my S tier difficulty. I wanna keep those there. Step three is the hardest exam I think that you'll have to take in, in all of your medical training. Um, a tier step one and the MCAT, yes, I, I do think they're about the same and step one feels like the MCAT very much so. B tier, the family medicine residency exam here in Canada, the CCFP, and then finally, in my opinion, the easiest exam is the LMCC exam. That's where I'm going to keep it. I am very happy with that tier list and I'll say that on average, some generalizations that I have is that to me, it felt like the American exams were just in a different league altogether than the Canadian exams. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so happy that I actually took the American exams. I think that they helped me in my studies and because now all that matters is that I'm going to be going out into the working world and in both my office and in the emergency departments and anywhere else where I'm going to be working. And the training that you have and the studies that you've done for these exams, that's all you really care about. I could care less about the scores that I got, more so what I learned from all of them. And I'll say that maybe one bias that I had, were the Canadian exams easier for me because I was a Canadian student and my education was geared to me in such a way that they were like kind of coaching me on how to interpret the questions the right way? I think definitely. That's what I've heard from some of the, the international students anyways. But uh, that's where we're at. So I'd love to hear where you guys are in your training right now and what exams you're studying for. Do you agree or disagree with this list? Leave all that fun stuff down in the comment section below. Check out predictmystepscore.com if, if you have a little bit of anxiety about when you should write this exam that you're studying for and how you would do. And uh, we'll see you all in the next one. Um, leave any questions you have in the comment section below. And everyone take care and uh, stay around.